Wine TV. I am your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And as you can tell, I'm all UT'd out. Of course, you're watching this on Friday. I'm recording this on Thursday. We better have won. And that's actually why I'm recording it today. Because I don't think I'd be in a good mood if we lose tonight if I'm recording this tomorrow. So, and it would be very unfair to any wine that I did. I probably wouldn't even have done a show. I probably would have said, well, I won't say what I would say, but I probably would have said, no show. So, of course, Gary would have liked that because it would have given him even more days of having the top slot on the website for his review. Um, anyway, uh, he says he's been busy with the Jets. He hasn't watched the review yet. Come on, Gary. Check it out. All right, so... In honor of tonight's game, uh, somewhat in honor of tonight's game, uh, we are going to review a Texas wine. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get one or two of the types of wines I, I specifically wanted. One was, it's it's a generic wine. It has the Longhorn label on it. I've seen one with the Aggie label on it. So it's the same wine. It's just they label it so that, you know, alum of the school go, oh, I got a Longhorn wine. No, you didn't. You got some, some I don't even know who does the wine, but you got a wine from somebody who just slapped the label on it. All right, so the other one I wanted to do, I uh, thought about doing, was St. Genevieve, which uh, has ties with the University of Texas, and they're a winery out in West Texas. Uh, Sam, my, my guy down there in Australia, used to work for them, uh, I think you said for a couple years at one point. Um, I had seen them, I had seen the, the, the wine at, I guess it was at Gabriel's, I thought I saw it at Specs, but I guess it was at Gabriel's, and I just saw white and red. I didn't see any varietal wines. I know they make them, so I so I didn't buy them the last time I saw them. So I decided to get this McPherson because I'd saw it. At, I'd I'd saw it. I'd seen it at the New World Wine and Food Festival uh, this past couple months uh, here in San Antonio, and I don't remember having a chance to try. I may have tried a couple other wines, but I know I did not try this one. So this is the um, sorry. This is the 2007 McPherson Tre Colore. Uh, this is. Uh, a Texas wine. It says a Rhone style red table wine. Uh, the winery is in the Lubbock area, but it just says Texas wine on there. Uh, bought it for handy dandy receipts. And I bought it a couple days ago. Uh, $11.99, and that was the, the debit cash discounted price um, at Specs. So, up on there so let's check it out uh, first of all um, I don't really talk about color very often but um, it's a pretty light wine like you can really see through it I mean if I didn't know what the oh let's talk about what the varietals are real quick and this is really why I bought it because I was like really this is kind of neat all right 58 58 percent Carignan Carignan 30 percent Mavedra and 12 percent Viognier little white wine action in there so you probably can't tell. I don't know. Maybe you probably can't. White background. It, it's it's pretty see through. Like if I didn't know any better, I would think I was drinking uh, a Pinot Noir, a light Pinot Noir, or um, a claret type of thing. So let's check it out. I'll, I'll read you the back label in a little bit because it's pretty hilarious. Interesting and interesting in a good way, not interesting. Like interesting, I'm afraid I don't like it. No, interesting in a good way. I'm laughing to my, I'm laughing to myself because I know what the label says, and I just had this thought. So sorry. Okay, right there. It was kind of neat. It was you, you, you're getting the red fruits, 
But it was like I got like a like a like a mom's tomato sauce, like mom's pasta, you know, like red sauce, like, and I I I swear I smelled like the pasta, but there was like a brief little hint there, and it's probably not I'm probably not supposed to get that off of the wine, but it just it just made me think of that. A little bit of spiciness. Um, Yeah, kind of peppery, very, 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 very mildly. I don't think I'm getting anything that's on the label, to be honest, that you're supposed to. But a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of red fruit, a little bit brighter red fruit. So let's check it out, see how it tastes. This wine's going. It's something I'm not used to getting in wine. I'm getting kind of like a strawberry, like a processed strawberry, like a not like eating a strawberry, but like a fruit roll-up type of strawberry thing. And I'm not used to. I mean, most of the wines I'm get I get don't have that component, even though I know it's a a fairly common component um, in some wines. It's kind of candy-fied, and it, it's not it's not unpleasant. It's not like a some of the sweet reds I've had where you get that that like, it's almost like, actually, a friend of mine up in Chicago, Brent, I, don't, I know you don't watch this, but Brent, if you watch this, happen to watch this one, uh, he, he gave me this uh, raspberry wine from Korea. This is well before I was really getting into the wine thing. I, mean, I was kind of into it. And it was like drinking, like, like sugar, like like the those ra like a raspberry candy that was melted down, and that's all. I mean, it wasn't like that's really it was just like purely just melted down raspberry. So I get a little bit of that. It's not as, it's not as um, heavy. And as I'm talking, I, I get almost like a peppermint. go but you get the point um, I kind of get that 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 Sunday night dinner pasta red sauce thing um, get, get a little bit of the sweetness with the strawberries um, so you're getting some spiciness and that's that's really where I'm going with the uh, with the um, uh, red sauce you get a little bit of sweetness with a little bit of spiciness of, 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 a, of a pasta sauce of a red sauce not not the not what you're gonna get out of a can of ragu, um, or if you do, it's pretty doctored up, okay? But it's it's you know it's not just dump out of a can and, and, and or ketchup type of thing. I hear some people put ketchup on their pasta. I don't get that. It's pretty good. I like it. I like how it's how it combines a lot of sweetness with some with some um, spiciness. It's not overly dry. You don't get a lot of tannins. Uh, it's real easy drinking. You easily could drink this. You know, just kind of chilling on the couch, watching a football game. Though I admit, oh, well, probably I probably will drink this tonight. Maybe I don't, I don't know, but I, I admit I'm gonna be drinking some beer tonight because it's football and it's. I'm gonna go out and get some Shiner Bach because we don't have any in the house right now. So I'm gonna go get some buy, guys buy some Shiner because that's, that's the beer of my college days. Though actually, here's a little tidbit: I really didn't drink in college. I didn't drink till I graduated college. I mean, I tried stuff, but I didn't really like alcohol. I guess I made up for lost time. So uh, score wise, well, I'm gonna say uh, it's a solid wine. Uh, I like it. I like for I like it for what it is. I don't think it's uh, overly complex. I mean, it's got some complexities to it, but I don't think it's like you know, I don't think it's like super complex, but I think I like it for what it is. And I'm going to say 88. I think it's great. And that grape thing is an ex excellent wine. I think it's really good. I like it a lot. Yeah, there's a little bit of, little bit of spiciness at the very end there. All right, so real quick, 
Let's, let's uh, read the back of the label. Long, long ago, in a vineyard far, far away, the forces of the three Rhone varieties, uh, Carignan, Movedra, and Von Viognier, were united. Their goal was to forge a union that would be of galactic proportions. Intense and often rebellious berry character from Carignan, rich, smoky violet aromas from Movedra, and the tropical flavors of Viognier are at the heart of this unique blend. Together, these three wines were aged to perfection and melded into a wine that could take on an empire of food. Dude, is that someone who's a Star Wars geek or what? Of course it has to be a 1337 wine. And that's another reason why I bought this, because the back label was awesome. All right, so um, cheers to McPherson. Uh, even though you are from Lubbock, where the Red Raiders are. Uh, anyway, they're not the biggest rivals for, for UT. That'd be OU and A&M, but still, playing tech is always a bit nerve-wracking, because you never know what's going to happen. You could get blown out by him, or it just depends on who shows up. Um, anyway, and I will not talk about the whole coaching controversy, because I'm just not going to. I'm not going to go there. Um, anyway, so tonight, well, at least for tonight recording, hook em horns. Uh, you're watching this on Friday. Let's hope that I'm not eating crow. Um, and uh, we'll see everybody again on Monday. Oh, Saturday, All-America Bowl. If you got it, if you can watch it, watch it. I was a judge for a hamburger thing, and I, there should be at least two seconds of video of me on there with my little Tweet Me shirt. So watch watch the game. I don't know when it's going to be on, but it'll be one of those little human special interest things. So probably in between quarters or halftime or whatever. But I got to meet four uh, really great guys, uh, future you know college guys. Two of them are going to Texas, and one of them is Cody. Oh, 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 this is how smart I am. Connor. All right. So these are the guys that I, I, I met with. Chantrell Henderson from Minnesota. He's a Vikings fan. Big, up, big ups to Chantrell. Um, Connor Wood, uh, he's going to UT. Jack, uh, Jackson Jeffcoat, he's going to uh, – oh, he's from Texas. And then uh, Traylon Sheed, he's also going to UT. And uh, Connor's quarterback – and uh, he, maybe I met one of the future starting quarterbacks of UT. He won't be the starter next season because somebody else is supposed to be in line. I forgot the guy's name. But I may have met a future starting quarterback of UT and maybe a future, um, I don't know, national champion. Um, and Sean Trout, well, yeah, Sean Trout won the, won the burger stuff. But uh, watch it, and uh, that's going to be it. Hope everyone has a great weekend. See you on Monday.